that did that. And then I think, whoops, redo, control D. I think what I did then with this is um, control U and I actually played with it and I made this one a little bit lighter for the background. And then create another new layer and select the bottom half and get the same gradient. Start up here, go down here, and it, you can see it makes like a half circle reflective area <coughs> there. And then Control D, and um, I actually think I went in, I'm trying to remember, you just go play with these things and change the colors and uh, you can make this one just a little bit darker um, you know play with the colors you can saturate it so it's more green or less green uh, whatever until you get something but I did have the bottom one darker and the top one lighter and you can see now um, how that gives you a uh, line in order to make that reflective text a little bit uh, better, uh, more realistic. <coughs> There's one more thing that you need to do to make this realistic and this is the part that I was excited about earlier today that as I was playing with all this trying to decide how I was going to teach you how to do this and um, I figured this out and nobody else does it this way and uh, kind of excited about it. Um, if you go, let's quickly go back to my layout. And here's the layout, the layer that we are going to be creating here. And it is the shadow layer. And I want to show you how important this layer is um, to the realism in here by making it invisible. And there is where we're at right now in our play file and then you put this shadow back on and you can see how realistic it makes it and it's actually very easy to make and it's going to build off of another tutorial that I actually have that you have already done if you're taking course two on a movable shadow so I'm gonna go um, to this original layer here Control J to duplicate it. I'm just going to move it up here because I got to have room. Then I'm going to go to my effects palette and apply a high drop shadow to it. Call up my settings and make the distance really high. Now it jumps around a lot. Um, you can go in here and manually put numbers in here um, if it keeps trying to jump off your page. But what you want it to do is to be down here, separate from your text up here. Okay, once you do that, um, right click on the layer and choose Simplify. Let's close out my adjust my uh, effects palette. And then um, however you want to do it, grab your eraser tool or your marquee and go up here and delete the original. And now you have this movable shadow. We did that in another tutorial. Um, so what you're going to do next is move that below your original text layer and kind of position it um, just below and to the right as you would normally but the trick is rather than leaving it like that the trick to this to make it realistic and more um, 3D is to grab this top bounding box and move it down now we're going to be deleting some of this shadow so when I'm adjusting this, I'm looking at uh, the bottom half of this shadow. I'm not concerned with the top half. I'm only looking at where the bottom half goes. And I'm going to move this up a little bit now that I'm scrunching it. And you can see the it, after you learn how to, <laughs> to visualize it, after you see the final, you'll be able to do, the, uh, be able to do this better. 
but um, you can scrunch it however much you want. I'm going to scrunch it a little bit more. Um, there is no right or wrong to this. Uh, as always, I'm going to use my arrow key. I actually don't like it to the right a little bit. I'm kind of more or less centering it. And um, I'm going to click OK. And with this layer as the active layer, I'm going to do the same technique that we used on this reflective text here by getting my marquee tool, selecting the top portion of this, right click, feathering it that 80, and then hitting delete. Control D to deselect. Now we have um, a realistic shadow layer. Uh, I'm going to take it off and put it on. And you can see how important that layer is. But look how easy it was to make. It gets really important when you're doing the ones like this because if you look here at the ribbon that's sticking out, look at the shadow down here and how it is um, applied. Uh, so when you have some irregular uh, things that you are trying to shadow um, in that way, um, this really, really makes all the difference in the world. And so see, I'm going to go back over here, take that off, and put that on, and you can see immediately how much uh, better that that looks. And so um, that is uh, pretty much all that you do. Well, I think we did something wrong here because my V... <laughs> Remember when I was having trouble moving things? See how this has got depth to it and this V doesn't? I messed it up when I was linking my things together. I just, just noticed that. The V looks like it's setting right on top of the line and the other letters are more 3D. Neither is right or wrong. Those are both cool techniques. Um, if you only wanted to hit your right arrow key to make it look like the V, um, you could do that but do have all your letters consistent. Um, yeah, I did goof that up as we were playing with it. But it's as easy as that. Um, it was a whole lot more talking and took a whole lot more time because I was showing you how to do it. And I did show you how to do the destructive. And we can take a look at the non-destructive way. Oops, if I click the right ones. There's the non-destructive method. It looks like I would need to lower my opacity a little bit on it. <coughs> I want you to, uh, before I leave, um, picture also uh, maybe having a person behind here extracted. Uh, remember, uh, the more uh, depth that you have uh, more layers, more realistic. You you will this will get. So as you have more things added to it, um, so you could have a little girl maybe on you know kneeling or looking over that, or maybe put somebody's hand over one of the letters, or just any variety of things. Um, this doesn't have to be centered. You can select all of these layers and. Uh, Control T and just move them down because you know me, I like everything to be um, bottom weighted. <laughs> you have taken my classes, right? <laughs> there. That looks even better, doesn't it? A little bit more bottom weighted. So, um, and if you wanted, then I could go back in here to this top one and just pull this gradient up. And uh, that would help uh, that a little bit. So, hey, I can't wait to see what you all do with this. I sure had fun making mine. <laughs> There's mine. And uh, it's going to be fun. Catch you around the corner. <laughs>